Hello everybody and welcome back to Making Things with String. This is my Floss Tube Plus episode number four. This is a YouTube channel where I talk about uh, the things that I'm making with string. <laughs> this is typically cross stitch projects um, and some knitting. Um, and uh, today I'm gonna have another special little uh, segment about some beading work that I've just learned how to do. So let's get started. Um, you'll see I have a new background. I'm trying this out today because the lighting is a lot better in my living room here. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully it's good. Um, right, so the first thing I want to talk about is Sampler September. So as I updated in my uh, last video, I decided to work on um, two Quaker Sisters sampler or one of the two. <laughs> uh, Quaker Sister Sampler by Modern Folk Embroidery. Um, I've hopefully got a photo of what that uh, pattern looks like. I'll also include um, a snapshot here of what I had done uh, at, at my last video, what I showed you on my last video. And the goal was to finish as much of uh, that one sister sampler as I could in September for Sampler September. So September's over now, it's October 2nd when I'm recording this. And I uh, have a little B-roll footage that I took and some photos that I took of my progress so far. So hopefully I'll be showing some of that. Um, but I do also have the piece here with me. So here is my uh, two Quaker sisters sampler, or one, <laughs> one of the two sisters, uh, and the progress that I've made. So I, I made it over halfway through this pattern. Um, as a reminder, I'm using a 32 count linen. Uh, the, um, the, sh the color is called Under the Shade. Um, and this is by Leo and Roxy Floss Co. I purchased it from evertote.ca. Uh, so yeah, 32 count linen. Um, and I'm also using Leo and Roxy floss colors uh, for this piece. I'm using butterscotch and kernel mustard. And yeah, hopefully you can see that. Uh, this is being worked two over two, um, except for the text in the very center of the piece. Uh, it says, for I am thine and thou art mine. That is stitched one over one. Um, I was so excited to get to the text while I was stitching this because the text is kind of what made me want to do this pattern. Um, and so when I got it, I was really, when I got to that part, I was really excited. Um, but it turns out that uh, stitching it was not very fun. <laughs> so I don't really love stitching letters in general. Uh, and it turns out that I don't really like stitching one over one um, on 32 count linen. So it, I got, that was a bit of a hurdle to get over, but I made it, I think it looks good. And um, now I can get back to stitching the fun stuff. So really enjoying this. Not sure how often I'll be working on it. It's not Sampler September anymore, so it's no longer like a focus. Um, but I am over halfway done and I would love to get it finished uh, and framed. So yes, that is my update on Sampler September. That was a fun little challenge uh, to set myself because I don't usually do uh, traditional samplers. So it was, a, it was a fun thing to try. So I have a small little update on Needs No Paint. So Needs No Paint is a Heaven and Earth Designs chart that I am working on, a beautiful full coverage piece. Uh, the art uh, that it's based on is by Jill Clare. Um, so I'll put you know a photo of that chart and also uh, a snapshot of where I was uh, last time that you saw the piece. Um, and I'll also show you some footage and some photos of where I currently am on this piece. So um, last time I was at 16.06% and this time I am at 16.59%. So it makes sense. I was focusing a lot on my Quaker sampler uh, and I didn't work very much on Needs No Paint, but I did get a little bit of progress on it. Uh, I worked on it 
um, a little bit on Friday and a little bit today. Uh, so this piece, I'll show it to you here as well so that you can just have a look at it while I'm chatting about it. Um, this piece is um, being stitched two over one and I'm doing tent stitch so it's only half stitches. Um, yeah, and this is just, you know, one of my favorite pieces that I'm currently working on. I love making progress on this. I'm almost at a page break, after which point I'm going to move over um, this way and sort of make my way towards the horse's head, which I'm excited about. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm really glad to be working on this again. This is going to ma uh, maintain um, as a focus piece for me going forward, but especially throughout the month of October. And um, so the month of October is uh, Mi'kmaq History Month here in Mi'kma'ki, which is where I live, uh, also known as Nova Scotia, Canada. And on Friday, it was uh, the second national, um, national day for truth and reconciliation. So this is the second year that we've had this um, national holiday and so yeah that's part of the reason that i worked on this piece on friday and that i want to continue uh, focusing on it a lot during the month of october uh, just because this piece was done by jill claire like i said uh, who is an indigenous artist so um you know it definitely is meaningful to me that the artist that did this piece was an indigenous um is an indigenous woman and so I, uh, I am, uh, you know, being mindful of those kinds of issues that are uh, prevalent right now while I'm stitching on this piece. Um, so yeah, sp f speaking of uh, the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation and the kickoff of um, Mi'kmaq History Month, um, this is not the only sort of crafty piece that has um, meaning for me in that respect. Um, while I was doing some errands on Friday, on the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, I was listening to um, an elder who they had on the radio who was discussing, you know, sort of some tips and tricks and ways to um, connect with the land. Um, and he mentioned Turtle Island, which is, um, which is, um, in many indigenous um, cultures, what uh, what the word they used to refer to sort of North America as uh, as we know it colonially. Um, so Turtle Island is you know uh, something that is really meaningful to me, um, and I, I actually have a turtle piece that I was planning on starting anyway, uh, and so I um, also started a new piece on Friday which is my geometric turtle pattern. So here's a photo of what geometric turtle will look like when it's done. Uh, this piece is uh, done by Riticuna. And yeah, I, I decided to get it started. So I'll show you sort of a picture or some video footage of where I currently am. So I started in the middle on this piece. Um, and I am using a beautiful piece of fabric that I got from Fat Quarter Shop. I ordered it online. Um, and the fabric is a 16 count Ada, and it is the color parchment, and it's by Fiber on a Whim. So that's what I'm using. This is just DMC thread, and you can see that I've got a little slice of turtle here uh, going. So this is a really fun piece. These Riticuna geometric um, patterns are really, really fun to stitch uh, just because they're, they're little blocks of color. So it's fairly mindless and easy. And yeah, that's, that's where I am so far on my little geometric turtle. Right, so continuing on my sort of um, 
crafts related to National Day for Truth and Reconciliation and also Mi'kmaq History Month. Um, I attended a beading workshop at uh, the university that I work at, uh, Dalhousie University. And yeah, there's a, there's a, a series of beading workshops that's being put on uh, by one of the other staff members at the library. And I attended the one that she hosted in September, late September, sort of leading up to uh, National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. Um, and so the first, she's gonna have a series of these workshops, but the first one that I attended uh, was a workshop on creating a, um, an orange shirt pin, a beaded orange shirt pin. Uh, so if you're not familiar with the notion of orange shirt day or, or the meaning of the orange shirt, um, there was an indigenous woman or is an indigenous woman named Phyllis Webstad who um, has this memory of arriving at a residential school in Canada and having um, this brand new orange shirt that her grandmother had just given to her taken away. And so the orange shirt has become sort of this symbol um, of remembrance of, um, you know, Indigenous peoples who were forced to attend these residential schools, um, some of many of whom died, young children died at these residential schools due to the conditions there. Um, and the ones who survived, like the whole point of the residential schools was to sort of stamp out uh, their culture and sort of assimilate them into, um, into the, you know, what the government wanted to be the prevalent culture here. And so that has had negative impact, obviously, not only on those uh, individuals who, uh, who were made to attend those schools and taken away from their families, um, but it also has caused, you know, lasting intergenerational trauma um, that, you know, uh, many Indigenous peoples are still dealing with today. So the orange shirt is uh, a great symbol. Lots of people wear orange t-shirts. You can see them wearing them on National Day for Truth and Reconciliation for sure, but people wear them on Canada Day a lot here as well. Uh, and so now I have my very own uh, orange shirt pin that was made by myself at a little workshop and they are beaded. And so beading is um, a craft that is um, important in uh, Mi'kmaq art. Uh, and there's, uh, there's a poster that they put out every year uh, during um, Mi'kmaq History Month and this month's or this year's poster is all about beading and so I'll put a link to I'll put a link to that below. Um, Michelle who Michelle McDonald who ran the beading workshop is going to be like I said doing a couple more of these. Uh, the next one that she's going to do is a poppy and she actually provided me with a little template so that I could get started on my poppy early and so I did that as well. So this is the little template that Michelle provided to me. Um, it's just like a, a, a poppy drawn on a piece of paper, glued onto a little piece of felt. And hopefully you can see that I've started the very center, um, placing some beads on this pattern. I purchased some black and red um, beads. These are Miyuki, Miyuki beads. Hopefully you can see. So the black beads are um, matte and the red ones will be sort of shimmery and shiny. And yeah, really looking forward to working on that. Um, yeah, so, so I'm really excited to be getting into that beading uh, practice. Actually, there's a, um, a knitting podcaster and a, a, a yarn dyer, Wool and Vine Yarns, Kristen, who uh, I love to watch. And she's been getting into um, bead weaving on like a little loom late recently. Um, and so, yeah, it's been fun. It's been fun to try something and learn something new, a new craft that I haven't um, got much experience with. Um, I'm really lucky because I get to engage in, in my work at Dell. I get to engage in practices that work towards um, reconciliation and decolonization in that context. 
Um, so I've been finding a lot of joy in bringing that perspective and mindset into my crafting as well. So yeah, like I said, while I work on these pieces, um, I like to, you know, reflect on the land um, and on decolonization, um, indigenization and reconciliation. And so it's a sort of mindfulness practice in addition to, um, you know, other things that I'm trying to do to educate myself and to enact change in, um, in our society. Uh, so that is all that I have for cross-stitching and um, my little blurb about beading. So now I'm going to get into uh, a little bit of knitting content. Uh, as you may have been seeing this entire video, I have finished my Florencia tea. Um, so I showed the start of this in my last video. I showed um, the little sleeveys that I had uh, stitched and I had started knitting up from the bottom on this. So this is a pattern uh, from Lane Magazine. Um, yeah, and uh, I just used the called for needles. I used um, a set of interchangeable knit picks needles to knit most of this uh, little t-shirt. Uh, and yeah, I'll sort of stand up a little bit so that you can see sort of how it goes. This is, this is what it looks like. So it's quite see-through, so you'd ha yeah, I mean, I feel like I need to wear this little tank top underneath it. Um, but I am super happy with the fit and the neckline in particular. I just, I feel like it's a great it's got lots of positive ease, which is what the pattern sort of directed you to do. Um, but yeah, it's it's a lovely little t-shirt. It's very comfortable. It's not too warm either. So now that it's getting to be uh, winter, I, I you know don't necessarily mind something a little bit warmer, but this is something I feel like I could wear kind of throughout the year um, and feel comfortable in. Um, and yeah, so th so this is probably the fa my favorite garment that I've that I've ever made. It's the one that has turned out the best. Um, but I will say that while I was working on this piece and like going through the pattern, um, you know, it's a beautiful pattern and it it worked out l really great. But there were a like several times where I felt that the pattern was a little bit tricky and. Um, hard to follow and I had to make a few educated guesses about what I needed to do based on my my personal um, knitting knowledge so uh, I feel like this would be tricky for somebody who had never knit a garment like this before uh, or who had never knit one in this particular construction method um, it was a little tricky and also the getting the uh, eyelet pattern repeat to match up appropriately uh, wasn't explained super well in the pattern and I did kind of struggle with that a bit until I sort of figured out a method that I would use and then used to that going forward to like figure out where how to align these up properly. Um, so I guess that's just FYI, if you're thinking about knitting this, um, I wouldn't, uh, you know, message me, I guess, if you want, and I can um, tell you the f more specific details if you have the pattern and you're wanting to knit it, or if you have questions about what I did in a particular spot, feel free to let me know or ask in the comments below. Um, but yeah, like it, it worked out, but I do feel as though I had to make some educated guesses that happened to be correct, and that's why it worked out. All right, so last thing I wanna talk about is uh, the next knitting project that I'm going to cast on. Um, and this is gonna be a new pair of socks. So October is uh, a month for knitting socks and we go by, uh, we use the word socktober to uh, indicate that. And so I'm gonna cast on a new pair of socks. Where are they? <clears throat> So my plan is to use the yarn that I purchased for myself when I was um, in, away in British Columbia this summer. Uh, here it is all caked up. Let's 
So this yarn is This yarn is by Ancient Arts, Ancient Arts Yarns. Uh, it's their Socknado base, which is 80% Superwash Fine Merino and 20% Nylon. Uh, and this color is called Pop Rocks. So I'll give you another look at that. It's kind of hard to get a good idea, but it's sort of a gray base with a whole bunch of different colors speckled through there. So I wanted to find a sock pattern that would um, allow those beautiful colors to shine through. So I wanted something that was predominantly stockinette. So I decided that I would try the dorsal socks by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade. I already own that sock pattern, but haven't knit it yet. So I'm gonna be trying these dorsal socks and uh, that pattern calls for a US size one needle. So I'm gonna be using my Licka Driftwood um, circular needles to knit those socks in the magic loop method. And that's my plan. I think I'm going to cast those on later today. And my plan is if I can figure out how to get the camera set up, my plan is to uh, shoot a little video of me casting on uh, those socks and knitting for a while and just sort of uploading that as a video. I don't know if anybody cares to watch it, but uh, I'm going to be casting on anyway, so I figure I might as well <laughs> um, record it and post it. So we'll see what, what comes of that, but at the very least, next time that I shoot a video, um, I'll have these socks started and I'll, I'll, show, you, I'll show you my progress um, and keep you updated on that for October. Um, is that it? <clears throat> yeah, I think that's about it. Um, things have been a little crazy here over the past week or since the last time I shot, uh, I shot a video. Um, Hurricane Fiona came through. Uh, we did, we made out pretty lucky. Um, in Halifax, we didn't quite directly get hit um, as hard as some of the other places nearby, like uh, Cape Breton, Prince Edward Island, and some places in Newfoundland have quite a bit of damage. Um, we were lucky we only lost power for about 30 hours, and um, there was no damage in our yard. No trees had fallen or anything. So uh, we were really lucky. Hi, baby. Come here. This is my little girl, Rosalind. These are good puppies. Yeah, is it time for your dinner? Is it time for dinner almost? Can you look over there? Oh. <laughs> yeah, we'll give you some food. All right, um, I'm gonna sign off and give my doggy her supper. Um, but thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video, probably about two weeks from now. Um, bye.